So if you're thinking about selling your house right here in San Diego, California, you want to know what the real costs are beyond just, you know, selling the sales price of your house. What does it actually cost to sell your house? That's what we're going to get in today. That's the question we're going to answer and let you know a few things you might not have thought about, even your time commitment costs plus preparation costs, or maybe they're not even costs, maybe it's an investment. So we're going to cover all that, get into some numbers, show you an actual net sheet of, you know, kind of what we give clients to let them know, give them a ballpark, a pretty good idea of what to expect to walk away with, at least when you sell your property. So let's jump into it without wasting any further time. Let's get into the real costs to sell your house. So one of the costs that is initially a cost and will eventually turn into an investment is the preparation part of your home. It's one of the most important pieces when you do sell your home. You got preparation, pricing, and promotion. That's the first P in selling your home. Preparation meaning getting everything you're ready, getting ready for pictures, getting ready for the market, put in that pristine condition. So in the end, you can sell your house faster and for top dollar. Some of those costs might include painting your house. It really depends, right, Lauren? Like yep. how much a house needs to be taken care of. Because some of these houses we walk into and they're just like, wow, this looks great. Let's move a few things around here and then get it rolling. Uh, what yeah. are your thoughts on the prep? The prep to me actually is not a cost. Although we're yeah. talking about costs, you're going to write a check for it maybe up front, but it is really something that the things that you do to prepare your home for sale should be things that you're going to get a return on that money for. You know, you can look at it a couple different ways, but you can spend it up front and get everything ready and make it look really perfect when the first people show up. Or some people just don't want to do the work and they build in, hey, I'm going to give 10000 for a carpet allowance and fifteen for this. And so you can do it either way you want. The best way, though, in our current marketplace is to have everything looking great so somebody can walk into the house if they like it they can move in and not have to think about spending more money main reason on that is most people allocate way more money than it costs to do the different things you would do to get the house prepped to make it look right so in their mind fixing up a bathroom might be twenty five thousand dollars when you can do it for seven the prep is super important part of this process. Some agents, they do offer services where they can upfront those costs for you. Like we have one, Compass Concierge, where yep. no money out of your pocket, get everything you need done, and then you know you just pay it back at closing. So Yeah. The one great thing about concierge is there's absolutely no cost. There's like no interest. It could take you three months to sell your house and you use fifteen, twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars of Compass's money. And um, when you come to closing, they just allocate that $30,000 back to Compass. Um, so it's really like borrowing it from a friend, really. Yeah, exactly. So now we'll pull up an actual, it's not a real net sheet, but a net sheet we made for this uh, purpose at a million dollars. The fee structure is about what you could expect to see um, on a potential sale in our area. Costs vary in different parts of the country. Commissions vary in different parts of the country. So the agent fees can vary, uh, not just different parts of the country, but everywhere. The one thing, um, as we talked about prep is a, the kind of prep, the things you do are really an investment. So some of these things are an investment too, but we'll get to that. And let's just start from the beginning. There's escrow fees and title fees. When you sell your house in Southern California, you typically would pay for a owner's title policy to pass on clear title to the new owner. And so that fees in there for a million dollar house. It's a, you know, in the 25 to $2,700 range. Escrow fees about the same, 2,500 bucks. You know, there's notaries. There's some of those little smaller fees. Tax transfer is, a, is another fee. That's 0.01% of the sale price. So that's 1,100 in this case. We also do disclosure forms that are prepackaged, natural hazard disclosure, 120 bucks for that. But as you go down, you know, home warranties, one of the standard things, sometimes you pay for one, sometimes you don't. HOA transfer, some areas have HOAs and some don't. Some transfer fees have gotten pretty hefty now. I've seen them up as high as $1,500. We've got 575, I think, in here for this one. So for our estimate in here, we've got an estimated number, but the, all of these fees vary. And the cool thing, or not the cool thing, but the one thing to think about when you get this initial, like before you list your house and you talk to your agent, you should get, hey, here's what I would net at what we think the sale price is. Really, your okay. closing estimate is a living document because as you go through the process, you're going to have one at the beginning when you list the home. And then as you 
process through it, you might adjust it a little bit. You know, you might adjust the price, sale price. You might adjust some costs you might be paying. And, you know, in our recent market that we've experienced, sometimes you're paying buyer's fees. Sometimes you're paying for different repairs as a cash outlay rather than um, actually doing the work. So think of it that way. So live document, you're going to update it till you get really close to closing. Then you're going to really have pretty close to the real number. As you're going through the transaction, you're from the buyers are usually going to submit something called a request for repairs. So after they do their inspections, a lot of times they're going to ask for either a credit or something repaired through the house, maybe some termite work. So it really depends on the, the buyer, what's going on with the house, uh, and, and depends on what those costs are going to be. But usually in those requests for repairs, there is going to be some sort of charge in there and you can update that through your net sheet. So as you go through there, run it through with your agent. Okay. So if, you know, if we're going to be, you know, $3,500 in closing costs credit, just take that off the back end and update that sheet. So you are, you know what you're going to walk away with at the end. Next cost that you might, well, you are going to come across because you're selling your house and you're moving somewhere. So what are those moving costs? Sometimes they can be significant. We help a lot of people relocate in and out of San Diego. So if you are coming from the East Coast, moving out here, how much is it going to cost to move all your stuff? One way to mitigate all that is before you move out, prep, get rid of a lot of stuff, stuff you don't need, kind of take inventory, what's actually worth the move. If you're moving locally, it's probably not as expensive or not as big of a deal, but also take into account, you know, the size of your house. Is everything going to fit in your new house? Kind of what are the dimensions? Is your your favorite couch or whatever it might be, your favorite piece of furniture going to even fit in your new house? So is that worth moving? But a lot of people, you know, you can do it yourself. A lot of people just save cash doing it that way. I always recommend hiring a professional moving company. It's going to yeah. save you a lot of stress and a lot of time and a lot of effort. And it's just moving is not fun, obviously. Nobody enjoys it. I've moved a ton of times in my life and it is, yeah, it's a chore for sure. So any ways to mitigate that after already going through the sale process is going to be ideal. So maybe hiring a professional or get a pod at your house. There's a little more economical ways to do it. If you're shipping cars elsewhere too, that could be a significant expense if you're going, especially across the country, obviously. But yeah, there's a lot of moving costs involved as well. Best case is to have a corporate reload in your company, send the movers to you and take care of it all. But yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those That's things. a good point. Yeah, yeah, you want you want to think through this the process too, like you mentioned, and whatever you can get rid of where you're leaving, leave it there and only bring what you need. And moving costs vary same distance, go in different directions. Mm -hmm. uh, we found if you're going one direction, it's different than it is going the other direction. So yeah, it's supply and demand, just like houses. They yeah. they are putting up the charges for these different things. So and they've increased with inflation this past couple of years. That that cost is something. I would get a hold of soon because you mm -hmm. might be surprised you haven't moved for five, six, seven years. It's going to be different. We'll get a hold of the cost and the time that it's going to take because sometimes they are backed up, especially sure. over these past two years. You know, you might not yeah. find the moving truck that you're looking for. Uh, and you made a good point too on the relocation. Talk If you are relocating somewhere for a job out of town, a lot of times they will potentially help you out with those moving costs. So chat with your employer and see if that is an option as well. All right. So one of the other parts of selling a home that you're going to come across and it'll be, it should be figured out in your net sheet based on the questioning your agent does with you is the taxes you may be paying for the sale of your home. The tax laws have changed over the years, a number of different times. Currently, if you're an owner occupant and it's a couple, they get five, $500,000 of the gain uh, without taxes on it. And then after that, it you know, you would want to talk to your CPA, your accountant, and make sure you understand how the different uh, tax laws are going to affect you on this particular sale. I, I know I was with some people and older folks that remembered the old system, which meant you sell a house for a million dollars and you buy one for a million, there's no taxes, a million or mm -hmm. more. And I said, no, it's not, you know, as long as you were trading into something the same or bigger, you didn't pay taxes, but that's not the case anymore. If you're doing, if it's an investment home too, you you know you may want to discuss the potential of a 1031 tax deferred exchange. So that's a process that takes some time, and you want to uh, go into that. If that's something that you're interested in selling tax free with your investment property to move the money into a different real estate investment. You know, give yourself an extra probably two three weeks to make sure you get that structured properly and understand the process of doing that. If you're selling, there are your main taxes you're going to pay from the gain, but then there's some 
some transfer taxes and things, depending on where you're at, that you'll pay that are a little bit smaller fees. And if you're out of state here, you pay, you know, they take part of the taxes up front as well. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're, if you're selling a non-owner occupied property or you're out of state seller of a property you've had here, the state of California wants par- a portion of, <laughs> of the sale up front uh, to make sure that taxes are paid on it. That's another fee that could show up depending on your situation. And before we get into the last one, if you guys are thinking about moving here, you want a net sheet, just want to pick our brains, what's going on. We are real estate agents with the Beach Life Group right here in North County, San Diego. So hit us up. That number is popping up right now or list in or in the description below. Call, text, email. We got your back when making the move here in North County, San Diego. Make sure you're up to date on all this stuff and you have the best idea of what it does actually cost to sell your house. The last cost is something that is not monetary, but it's time. How much time you have to invest to sell your house from that initial thought all the way through closing. And it could be a long time frame. So a lot of people get the idea they want to sell. Let's start getting our stuff ready. It really depends on that preparation. How how much preparation are you going to do? You're just going to do some touch up stuff. You're just going to do a little bit of paint, a little bit of, you know, maybe some flooring, all that kind of stuff. Just the simple stuff to really spruce it up. Are you going to do some full remodel? What's your timeline looking like on that kind of? So that could be anywhere from like, a few weeks to a few months. And then you go into, let's put your house on the market. So once your house does hit the market, it really is dependent on what's happening right now in the market. Last year at the middle part of 2022, houses were sitting on the market for nothing, like a weekend maybe. So that and at that time on the market was very small. Right now it kind of varies, but an average kind of time frame is about 30 days that a home is sitting on the market. And if the market shifts, that's going to be a lot longer. So, and it goes back to where it was, it's going to be a lot shorter. So it really depends on what's happening in the market right now. And then you have the escrow process, which is typically, let's say 30 to 60 days. It really depends on how fast the lender can get stuff done. What, if there's any special loan programs or whatever that they're doing, but it's kind of negotiated with you and the buyer that time frame. So all in all, if you have like 30 to 60 days in escrow, you have about 30 days on the market. That's 90 days right there, plus however long it took you to get prepped. So that time investment can be quite significant. But if you go that route, you want it done quicker. There is usually a monetary cost to that. So take that all into account as well. Time and money. We And we have folks that can make cash offers based on somebody wanting to cash out quickly as well, if that's something that you want to explore. 